G'day, didgeridoo, smart person. Welcome to the Physics Club, where we science the shit out of everything. Today, we're going to be watching a new show. We're checking out uh, a show called Solar Opposites, which is apparently uh, Justin Roiland's new show. So because we're bros, he asked me to check it out. I'm kidding, he didn't. But we're going to check it out anyway. It looks pretty cool, so let's get into it. Just a quick disclaimer, you won't find any serious physics in this video, but you will find some seriously fun facts. That's what this channel is all about. So please apply some time derivative on momentum onto that subscribe button if you like fun facts. So I keep getting some comments along the lines of, Dylan, you think you're so smart, blah, blah, blah. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I honestly think I'm nothing special. Um, I'm just passionately curious and I know a lot of random stuff about the universe. Um, and I enjoy talking about it. So I'm just trying to share some of that with you guys. I'm not trying to flex my knowledge. I am just trying to make some passive income, to be honest. Plus, it's fun as hell. Plus, we've created a bit of a community. Um, and I'm a fairly antisocial guy, so it definitely helps my uh, mental state out. All right, that's enough BS. Let's watch this show. Planet Schlorp was a perfect utopia until the asteroid hit. 100 adults and their replicants were issued a pupa and escaped into the space searching for new homes on uninhabited worlds. We crashed on Earth, stranding us on an already overpopulated planet. That's right, I've been talking this whole time. I'm the one holding the pupa. My name's Corvo. This is, this is my show. I just dropped the pupa. Do you see me? Th th this is ridiculous. I hate Earth. It's a horrible home. People are stupid. Where the f*** are all the dinosaurs? What did they do to all the dinosaurs? This is great. I love it. Of my mother. I just wish I could see her one last time. Might have to do a reaction to uh, the Matrix Everyone is someday. so relaxed, even though they're about to explode. Truly the mark of an advanced society, except for the panic zones. I have resigned myself to death, although I will miss my friends and family when I'm gone. Oof, that guy's embarrassing himself. Hey, we're almost at the spaceport. We just need to smack this bad boy into the hatch and we'll be done. You got this, boy! Damn it! Hey, mission accomplished! Now let's get back. I gotta watch some more Hulu Vizu! <laughs> You notice the Back to the Future sound effects every time they do that? If your pupa turns orange, it means it ate something orange. Well, I did feed it a bag of Doritos Cheetos Party Blast. You know, the same stuff that turned me orange when I ate it last year. This is a relief. We aren't going to get consumed by the pupa, at least not today, and we changed the past without creating a single unintended butterfly effect, so we really slam dunked it. Look at us! We're ballers! We are ballers! Oh. Hey, fun! Ha <laughs> We're out of Stella! Is somebody gonna go, uh, replenish? Wait, what? Who the f*** are you? Holy shit, there's an alien in our house! Quit jerking around, you two have chores to do. Help me organize all my- Alright, so the butterfly effect. This is definitely worthy of a tangent, so it is a beautiful thing in math. Um, and if you've never really thought too deeply about it, let's go down that rabbit hole. So it comes from the area of math called uh, chaos theory, which is just like a branch of math. So the study of chaos kind of stems from uh, the realization that seemingly random disorder in the universe is governed by deterministic laws that are extremely sensitive to initial conditions. And so this gets at what the butterfly effect is, that changing the initial conditions of anything in the slightest way, like a butterfly flapping its wings, can result in macroscopic effects. So the butterfly effect is essentially small changes can have macroscopic uh, effects, um, changes. Uh, so the example that the name came from is that, you know, a butterfly flapping its wings um, can result in a typhoon somewhere. Um, so when I say initial conditions, I just mean at any given point, right? It's not the, you know, the Big Bang. We're not, you can think of the Big Bang as the initial conditions for the universe, right? But you can also imagine the con initial conditions being anywhere you begin to predict into the future. So I'm sure most of you have a pretty good intuition for this kind of phenomena, even if you don't realize it. Um, so think back to, you know, when you met your partner or which school you went to or, you know, the, changing one small thing in life would have led you down a very, very different path. Um, some people kind of 
think that, you know, oh, if I change this thing back, you know, when I was young, I would still end up where I am. Um, and the butterfly effect kind of completely contradicts this. Um, and it states, you know, changing even a small thing in, you know, earlier in your life, you'd be in a very, very different place. So when you think about stuff like this, even negative things that have happened to you in your life, they are directly responsible for you being where you are today. So if those things didn't happen, you wouldn't be where you are. So if you're in a pretty good position, um, you're content, you have a, you know, a nice life, you're happy, well, and you've had some negative things in your history, um, well, just you should appreciate that they happened, kind of, because you wouldn't be here right now if those bad things didn't happen. And I could name a bunch of examples in my life where I had a something that was kind of really shitty, but it resulted in something amazing coming from it. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of you know what I'm talking about. And the butterfly effect also reminds me of one of my most favorite quotes in a metaphysical way, but also it has some uh, relation to real physics. Uh, so the quote was by uh, Paul Dirac. He was one of the giants of quantum physics. Um, he gave us the Dirac equation, which could very well be my, my most favorite equation as well. Um, I'll talk about that another time. I'm sure it'll come up. But the quote is, pick a flower on earth and you move the furthest star. So we could dive deep into what he meant by that quote, but just quickly, I think he's referring to the Pauli exclusion principle, which is that no two electrons can be in the same quantum state. So, you know, by picking a flower, you're changing some quantum states of electrons in that flower, right? And that directly has a consequence for all the electrons surrounding the flower um, and everywhere else in the universe. So what he may have been referring to is that, you know, you pick a flower, like I said, you're changing the quantum states of electrons um, and which directly changes quantum states on the furthest, farthest reaches of the universe um, in a, inside a star that also has, you know, a bunch of electrons and all these quantum states that directly have to shift because of it. But what he could also just simply mean is, um, you know, you move, you pick a flower and it has these rippling effects in space time, you know, the gravitational effects and that ripples everywhere throughout the universe because, you know, every action, every movement, you're causing these gravitational waves, however small they might be, but you're definitely, definitely causing them and they definitely have effects everywhere in the universe. Everything affects everything. Everything is in motion um, and it's all extremely connected, which is, you know, really beautiful to think about. But anyway, that's uh, enough of this tangent. Okay, I think I accidentally just watched the final episode of the first season. Did not intend to do that. <laughs> I was meant to watch the first episode, but anyway, it's too late now. If you want to see me watch some more episodes of this show, comment down below and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.